The purpose of healing. We have come a long way with understanding how to heal at many different levels. We know more about the effectiveness of mind-body integration and the importance of healing our spirits. But what is the purpose of healing? Join me, Deb Goldberg, and my special guest, Sheila Cash. Welcome everyone to Angel Heart Radio. I'm your host, Deb Goldberg, and it is a great pleasure to be here with all of you today. And it's an honor to serve you in the highest ways that I can by bringing you messages of divine love and blessings for your life. You are dearly loved, cherished, and blessed. We have a fabulous show for you today. I have Sheila Cash with me. Welcome, Sheila. Oh, thanks for having me, Deb. I'm really, uh, really a fan of you and your work and your show, and I'm thrilled to be here. Um, I'm excited to have you here. We've had you here before, and it's so nice to have a guest back again. Uh, so she, let me tell you a little bit about Sheila. She is the new human master coach and an ambassador of conscious evolution. She's the author of the number one bestseller, Evolve Your Life, and Success Breakthroughs with Jack Canfield. Her work over the last 20 years has spanned more than 50 different courses, lectures, training, and personal mentoring and developing skills for the new human. Who we are now and who we need to be to navigate our rapidly evolving lives in this new paradigm of consciousness. So Sheila teaches expanding consciousness practices in the fields of psychic cellular consciousness and energy medicine and universal channeling in the context of moving from one's inner authority and innate superpowers to the we space of collective consciousness and further expanding into the impulse of evolution itself. Through the personal mentorship with the iconic futurist Barbara Mox Hubbard, she immersed and researched the consciousness of the future and humanity's progressing capabilities. Sheila, that's amazing. What an amazing life. <laughs> well, you know, Deb, you know, really, we're all doing that. You know, we may not mm -hmm. know how to put words to it. But it's all about evolving along and it's about, you know, just um, immersing in what your passion is, what your interest is. This is the life impulses, um, inspiration and drive to move all of us along, um, you know, our little piece in the puzzle. And so, you know, at one level or another, we're, we're all doing this. <laughs> we are. It's and it's, it's happening, what do we want to say? It is um, part of the progression in our own being that keeps moving us forward, right? Oh, absolutely. But, you know, so it, it is. It's, it's the progression from the spiritual level. Um, you know, it's progression, you know, even at every level, physical, mental, emotional, and of course, everything starts in the spiritual, and then eventually it downloads, you know, further and further down. Um, but we, you know, we we are a, we are a, a significant part of the whole picture, and so everything that we do, and every thought we have, and every every way that we seek to heal, informs the biggest picture. 
and and that's what evolution is <laughs> and it's and it's beautiful it, it really is. is a beautiful process it is it's it's so incredible and and if we can come to an understanding of what's really happening here um it it could bring more um more respect for the process you know more joy and um less maybe you know obligation less um unhappiness well you know these are awesome topics that i really want to get into but i think it's important for people to know how you got to where you are now so i read a little bit in your uh, bio but i know there's so much more so can you give us a little bit of background before we really get into why, what the purpose of healing is and, and conscious evolution? Yeah, you know, so I have just, um, you know, I say even as a, a, a little kid, I was interested in the questions, you know, why is the sky blue? And, you know, what, what are the clouds about? And what, you know, just full of questions like most kids are. Um, but I always did you know, have a fascination with, with the spirit and the spiritual and, you know, what's really happening there and what, who is God and what is that all about? And, and what does it mean here? And, you know, and, and who are we, why are we here? You know, but instead of that being, you know, more of a, a passive um, hobby, it really, it really did inspire my life. Um, I, I did, I have three kids who are all adults now. I was the proverbial soccer mom in Northern Virginia outside of DC and spending most of my, you know, weekends in one, you know, field or another. Um, and, uh, you know, then really just started to get back into um, our capabilities as humans, you know, including the senses. So I'd always had a, a big awareness of, of our sensory capacities and that is another thing that's so fascinating you know to be able to know things that you can't see mm -hmm. and how does that work and what can we know what can we do you know it's our superpowers that we had gotten separated from many centuries and millennia back um and so so that led into uh, my interest in, in cellular consciousness and mind-body integration, energy medicine. Um, and then the book that I wrote, um, which I was telling you a little bit about before, that, that ended up being downloaded sort of one sentence at a time for around 14 years, <laughs> that I had no idea it was a book, like, no idea at all. And when I started to put it together, it literally just put itself together into categories, which became the chapters. I had to read the book even after it was published because I was like, all of these came from my little sticky notes, all these words, but you know, it was just, I trusted and I just kind of followed the process. Um, and so when I became aware of conscious evolution, which is simply evolving consciously, you know, ha you know my, my mentor, Barbara Marks Hubbard, who you, um, who you mentioned there, says, you know, that we are at a place now where we can evolve by choice rather than chance. So this is the, par the new paradigm where we can choose, and we've known this for many decades, but there's still so much more growing to do and so much more immersion, you know, that, that we can put into that. But, but rather than moving with the wind and moving with cultural conditioning and intergenerational conditioning, you know, we can be very conscious. Um, and so this leads us to the new human and the new human is, is, is just who do we need to be moving forward? Our world is changing so fast um, that, I mean, even almost from hour to hour, in some weeks. And now with the pandemic, you know, we have so much adapting to do. And so what will best serve us moving forward into the future? It's about visioning what is in the future in the first place, and then um, joyfully moving into development of our 
of our innate capacities, you know, what can best serve us to get there? And that's what the new human is. And, and I have just um, continued to roll along from one thing to the next. And each chapter is as exciting as the last and onwards we go. That's amazing. Um, you know, t thinking about that we have a choice. Yeah. We have a choice to consciously grow. Mm -hmm. And not everybody understands that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a, it's, um, that's what everybody's trying to do, I guess, is reach people in, in their own way to let them know that you are so much more than what you think you are. Really and truly. Um, you know, there's many different parts of society that are that are, are pulling together toward this effort. Meaning, you know, we, we naturally, we're always going to be evolving one way or another. But for example, the, the movement toward oneness and toward unity, which has been going on for many decades. But it, but it brings us to new understandings as, you know, as each new year unfolds. But that, that movement itself is the, the evolutionary impulses mm -hmm. uh, way of bringing us together for a reason, for a reason. So I use that word evolutionary impulse a lot. I actually, one of my practices is to channel that impulse, which is just, it's the life impulse. It's the impulse that keeps life moving. It, it's the impulse of evolution that keeps, that keeps coordinating and organizing and adapting all of the infinite number of factors that go in. Um, but, you know, we can tap into that and, and get, you know, nudgings and, and inklings about the trajectories and the, you know, the patterns moving forward. Um, so that's just, you know, one example of how we're being inspired toward consciousness is right now to, you know, we've had different periods where it was important for us to focus more inwardly and focus on the ego. So we, through the 60s, 70s, you know, all of the work in psychology, and you would know you're, you're degreed and, and very um, much an expert in that area. And so at that time for us, that was the most important thing. You know, now we're moving into even further into oneness and unity. And I say, you know, oneness does not mean sameness. So I've had, you know, I've, 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 I've talked to a lot of people and my clients at times balk against the concept of oneness because maybe they don't want to be like that person over there. Mm -hmm. And I say, you know, oneness doesn't mean sameness. Oneness means the, collect the collection of uniqueness, the collection of unique individuals. But the oneness is... is is referring to that sacred mission. It doesn't mean that we all have, that we're gonna get there in the same way. That's because that's actually antithetical to what the evolutionary impulse wants. The impulse wants your unique input, wants the billions of unique inputs. That all, every bit of it informs our consciousness and informs our evolution going forward. So, so the ego and the, in, the, the inner world, the inner authority is extremely significant, more significant than I think any of us could ever realize. We, mm -hmm. Sometimes we think of ourselves as being so small and, you know, and, and when we're trying to heal that, that it's just about us. And it's not just about us, it is about humanity you know, and spirit in the, in the universe. <laughs> I totally agree. I totally agree. And, and I think, yeah, we are all being asked to step up to go higher. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, like you said, we spent so much time uh, understanding what ego is mm -hmm. and that it plays a role in our uh, um, evolution of uh in so many different ways 
uh, and and now it's sort of like okay I know that's there and how do I keep moving forward and going higher and and I don't want to say integrate that part of that part that's along for this ride with us mm -hmm. um, as an aspect um, and learn how to as as maybe you want to look at your higher self mm -hmm. as the highest part of you is in control of all the aspects of yourself and I really liked what you said about the diversity because we're not supposed to be all the same. In fact, inside each of us, we have a whole cast of characters. We have so many different aspects of our own being uh, that, you know, you could do a one man show, uh, <laughs> <laughs> which creates some, it creates our personality. Yeah. And, and, and that is what actually we are integrating and healing those aspects of ourself that we have pushed away that we thought something was wrong with or we had experiences that were painful that need to come back to us so because it's part of our wholeness and one of the understandings that I've had is that um, when you become harmonious with your own diversity within yourself then you can become more harmonious with the diversity outside of yourself mm -hmm. and just allow people to be who they are. Absolutely. You know, wow, I, there's so much in, 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 in what you brought up there. I mean, I realized at one point that, you know, that ego, I mean, the best part of ego is that it, um, it gave us the inspiration to be better, to be bigger, to be stronger, to be, you know, more. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, and, and that's always going to be a factor too. So it's never an either or world and we don't really ever leave something behind completely. I think, as you said, it, it's, a, it's about assimilating. Um, I, and I have a kind of a funny story some years ago, many years ago, I was all about letting go. And I was really on this quest to find out, you know, how to let go, how to let go. Because that's just the biggest, it was just the biggest thing for me at that time. So I, I actually started a letting go group. So I had, a, and people were flooding in, you know, they, uh, I mean, hundreds were, were kind of joining and as this is just the thing for everyone, you know. Um, and, and I was deep in meditation one day and, and it was just, it, it's almost hard to put words on, but it was a, it was an experience. It was like an energetic experience. And I was really viscerally feeling into the process of, of letting go, you know, at the cellular level. And I tapped into that cellular consciousness and I, I, I really felt and I sort of went through this whole process and came to understand that when when we're trying to let go we are we're we're put, we're shoving something out we're saying we're letting you know we're letting go of you we want to leave it behind we want to take we want to take it out and then we can move on but what happens is we're all alive as long as we're alive. <laughs> we have to keep living. We have to, you know, there's always going to be things coming into our lives that we will want to let go of or, or, or we will seek eventually to, to let go of. And as long as, but, but being that we are a part of life, um, it's all about assimilating everything that comes in about absorbing and assimilating and balancing with everything that comes in mm -hmm. because life isn't separate and we're not separate from all those factors of life. And as long as we keep trying to shove it out, we're never going to heal. We're never going to get to balance. It's never going to go away mm -hmm. <laughs> because we are living creatures. We're human beings we, and we have consciousness and we can't, you know, making something disappear doesn't equal healing. It, it's about assimilating. 
So as we assimilate, it naturally dissipates whatever it is because, because you've assimilated it. But the, but the best part about the story was I had this, this download and now I had this letting go group. And I, I was like, new, I got a big news flash for everyone. Letting go is not really about letting go. And, you know, and as long as we assimilate, um, that's where, that's where we, we become whole and move on. And literally had to let go of the letting go group because there was no more reason for the letting go group. So I let go of the letting go group. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. True story. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is. It is interesting how you, um, as you keep evolving in consciousness, you. It's it's like a step. A, it's like a step ladder, and so what you thought you understood before, you see it from more a, an expansive view, and then you go, oh, well, that kind of doesn't doesn't make sense now. What I knew before, because I had a. Um, I had a more expansive view of truth, of divine truth. Yeah. yeah. And everybody's at a different place, you know, on the ladder. And we all have, you know, different experiences. But the processing is what is important. The processing is what consciousness and spirit and, and the universal wants. Mm -hmm. Because there's never one right answer to anything. You know, and it's not an either or universe, it's an and universe. And that mm -hmm. biggest picture is made up of, of all of our opinions and thoughts and experiences and processes. And so as we, pro and this is another piece of the letting go part, if you, if, if you let go before you've processed, and there's a lot of bodies of thought that, that do say, you know, you, you can just let it go. And it, you know, I mean, we, that could be a whole other show as well, <laughs> but, um, but doing the process, because every thought that we think and every revelation we have, um, and every bit of understanding that we come to around the imbalance. So I'll just call, you know, the, you could call it illness or healing. Uh, I mean, uh, imbalance, every bit of that, um, is you know again it, it informs the big organizer <laughs> in the universe so that now it's not just you know here's one answer to this problem but here is this multi-billion angled answer as long as we are processing consciously so every thought we have gets uploaded to the collective consciousness. And, and then it's there for us, for humanity to draw from, to be able to download from. Just like I said, I was downloading, you know, hundreds of thousands of little bits and points for my first book. And you've done the same. Um, we, we have access to these downloads because others that came before us have done their processing. You know, we're talking about drawing upon billions of bits of information. Um, and so, it, you know, it, it all goes in. I mean, that, that is the notable and significant part of it. We can draw from it and everything that we put in benefits those who aren't even born yet. I said, otherwise, we'd, we, you and I, we'd be sitting in a cave over a fire right now having this conversation, you know, having some kind of conversation <laughs> about jerky or something. <laughs> whatever. Oh, my goodness. That is, yeah, that's a, it's an amazing thought. Understanding that there's only one consciousness. And I look at it as, um, so I might call that, it's, it's creative consciousness it's creative um creation it's just creation and it's all consciousness and it's constantly um showing you what's in your mind and um showing you different parts of what's in your mind whether you want to call it divine thinking or or ego consciousness or whatever whatever's there and so yeah we are all sharing 
each other's thoughts. I, I meet people and, and I, I have this all the time with my husband, you know, I could be thinking something and he walks in the room and says it mm -hmm. and, or somebody starts talking about a story going on in their life that has to do some with something that I'm thinking about in my mind. And I just, I'm just like, Oh my goodness. I'm just hearing my own thoughts. I'm hearing my own th thoughts being brought to me by this awesome person outside of me. Yes. Uh, and, um, and so it is amazing how, so we're, we're more connected in so many ways than we could ever imagine what you're talking about. So we all affect each other and everyone, everyone is affecting everything. It's, it's not just people, it's nature. It's because we are nature. Yeah. We are nature. We are one with nature because everything is creation. Absolutely. You know, I love, every time I've had an idea for a book, I end up seeing it on a talk show or somewhere or somebody's talking about having that idea. So if any clients ever tell me they're going to write a book, I say, you better write it now because there's probably a dozen other people in different corners of the world who, who are thinking of the same thing. And it does work that way. You know, I say archaeologists, you know, um, digging up things from around the world find that the same kinds of tools and the same kinds of um, culture popped up at the same time all around the world, long before there was shipping, long before there was any kind of travel intercontinentally. But, you know, certain tools, language, um, you know, it, but, and even boating, shipping, all of these things were happening around the world and you know and it sh and and you know why is that it's because every time someone discovered a tool or discovered a word or discovered an anything it gets uploaded and then people from all corners of the world any any human being and like you said nature um actually downloads that and takes it into consideration too which is, a, which is an awesome thing. You know, isn't that just unbelievable? I love it. I think it's amazing. It is amazing. In fact, I was asking God, so can you explain to me how this all works? <laughs> how do you do, how do you work this magic? <laughs> and he said, you're not going to understand it. So just, <laughs> just accept it as it is. <laughs> and can you, can you just accept that and take it in? Because you're not going to, uh, you're not going to be able to understand it. But it's such a beautiful mystery that we just want to keep knowing more of, oh my goodness, how does this magic miracle creation work? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I think, you know, one of the ways to get closest to your piece of it um, is is through your authenticity. So this was one of the things that had been coming in um, that I wrote about, you know, in, in that first book. Uh, another, you know, a download that I had gotten from that was that life itself through, you know, through scientific principles and, and you know, through science, you can study that, you know, life is always seeking balance we have to have balance or life ceases to exist. And that's the acid alkaline balance and, you know, the yin yang. I mean, it's, you know, it's demonstrated everywhere. And that our DNA throughout humanity is distributed in, in a balanced way, right? So from the biggest picture, um, it, it works that way so that we can carry on as a species so that we can survive. And so your DNA has all of your desires, your, your favorite things, your characteristics, and like you said, all of the cast of characters mm -hmm. that, that you bring in. Um, and so the closer that you get to honoring all that came in with you and for you, the more that not only you heal yourself, 
but you're also healing the world because you're 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 honoring that place, your piece of that bigger picture. You know, so many of my clients, um, especially during these months of the pandemic, people have had a chance to stand back and and really take stock of their jobs and you know what they're doing with their lives. Not that we haven't done that all along, but it seems to be concentrated now and like amplified during this period that we're going through. Um, and, and some of them find themselves in such misery when they realize that they're, that they're not honoring their authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, you know, and it's because we just hadn't gotten to this point yet. You know, our parents, our grandparents, they did what they had to do. Even if that was, you know, staying in the home, taking care of the family, the kids, you know, doing the work, it was never about, oh, what would you love to do in this world? Right. <laughs> you know, it's more about how are we going to get the corn to the table? And, you know, right. um, so, we, so it's new for us, you know, this, this freedom of choice, freedom and consciousness is very new for us. We don't know what to do with it, mm -hmm. you know, and we're still trying to figure that out. But one thing is for sure that the more you get to your authenticity, the more you do heal. Mm -hmm. um, and as we heal, you know, we heal humanity, we heal the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. Those are such great points. Um, and so is that incentive enough for somebody to take on the journey of doing some healing work? or understand that there is healing to be done within mm -hmm. themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, and, you know, if I, if I think back to, you know, I didn't get awoke until I was 56. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time in this daydream, in this <laughs> sleep of consciousness. Um, and even though I was given direction, uh, probably... 30 years ago through a dream of what I was supposed to do career wise. I was in my thirties. Um, I didn't understand anything else. I just knew that something was looking out for me and, and gave me what I should be pursuing because I was unhappy and I kept asking for guidance. But, you know, I thought, and I was a therapist for 18 years. I thought I had healed myself from trauma and then I realized that when I woke up eh, no I didn't really heal myself in the to the level of really what needed to be healed and it's because I didn't understand things from a higher consciousness perspective I didn't understand through a divine truth versus the, all the programming that you talked about earlier um, and I didn't realize how programmed I was and that how er everybody else is. So I don't believe that there's anybody that, um, unless, of course, as you've go gone along and have done your work, I don't believe that anybody go gets by without having shame or guilt mm -hmm. um, to deal with mm -hmm. um, so about something in their life or difficult experiences that got shoved down or somebody's still in a state of anger over them or grief that has not been processed. And most of it is all grief. I, what I have found is through my own healing is that I was processing grief all the time. And a lot of it was because I, of things that happen and my perception of what happens. Mm -hmm. And not knowing how, here we go, to let go, let go and, uh, and see things from another perspective, a higher perspective, in order to help myself let go. Which, for me, this process un unraveled all divinely through God and Jesus actually speaking to me about all of these things. So that's the way I experienced it. But everybody's, like you said, is going to have a unique experience about healing. And, 
And you know what? I found something today, and I thought this was really interesting that I found it this morning to bring it up in this conversation. I, I had a, a prayer dictated to me this morning, and the word sublime was in it. Hmm. And I thought, I'm really going to, I'm going to look this word up and really see what it means. Hmm. And there's an archaic definition of sublime that I would have never understood. And it said to elevate to a high degree of moral or spiritual purity or excellence. And I was like, oh my God, I would have never attached that to that word. But that is an archaic definition of sublime. Mm. And I believe it fits right into this discussion that we're having about how you evolve and this is what you're evolving to and this is when you heal yourself you are evolving through that process of um of understanding actually your spiritual purity Mm -hmm. well first i want to say really congratulations to you for making the shift toward toward your authenticity because it is difficult, you know, and we get, we, we get so enmeshed with, with family and finances and traditions and cultures. And um, it, it is, it, it, there can be some, some a good bit of sacrifice in that kind of a shift. Um, but, but culture is moving more and more and more toward the acceptance of that for people. I mean, again, remembering when you and I were little, you know, you were supposed to get a job and stay there for 50 years and get yeah. your watch it when you're 100. <laughs> yes. um, but, but I think that um, understanding that, first of all, healing, when something comes up to be healed, and it's often coming from the generations, mm-hmm. you know, it's coming from those patterns, that it's coming up in you because life wants your input, wants your angle on it, wants your processing. So it's, it's not as much of an obligation and it's not coming up to, to torture you. It's coming up as an honor in a way, you know, not that healing is easy, you know, and, and not that, you know, you know, pain is, is pleasurable. I'm not trying to, to say that, but I'm saying, you know, life does want your, wants to know how, what, what are you going to do with this? Mm-hmm. How are you going to deal with this? Um, and not as a challenge, but as, you know, as an honor, life really says, I want to know what can you tell us humanity us the world what can you tell us what can you bring to it you know what revelations realizations when people are sick i mean and and this can happen in so many ways because it could be it might spurn research this is how discoveries are made they're inspired by people who are sick right if nobody was sick nobody's going to try to find the cure, you know, it's inspired by the heart, you know, the heart felt um, urgency to, to find, but it, it always benefits the world. Um, maybe it could be that you bring, you know, and maybe something is incurable. We have, you know, a lot of that as we go along, cause it's always a process, but maybe you bring perseverance to the table and as you, as you really amplify perseverance, that gives others more courage. Just like the first person to break the seven minute mile, you know, now everybody could. And it's this way with, with, with all the parts of healing. Maybe you just bring, not even just, maybe you bring grace. Mm-hmm. Maybe you teach grace. Maybe you amplify grace in the world. You know, and, and even um people who commit suicide you know so maybe the, you know they're having mental emotional turmoil and they end up taking their own lives well that that is those are choices and those choices inform 
the collective too. Mm -hmm. And those choices inform the people around the ill. Um, you know, is there something more we could have done? Or maybe it simply um, is just freedom of choice. These are all of the things, the factors that, that get amplified and that we, we all end up taking it in and assimilating and then moving on as we, as we move on. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, again, there's no right or wrong answers. We're going to evolve the way that it comes together collectively. And that will be shown as it's shown. You know, you brought up the word perspective. That was another concept that I had a really strong download on because I, at one point, I, you know, realized that, there isn't really so much of truth as, you know, or I should say reality is, is for each of us is whatever our perspective is. Mm -hmm. But again, but we have our own perspective and then the life impulse, the evolutionary impulse has its, um, adapt, it, it adapts to whatever we are perceiving collectively. Just think about how different, attitudes and thoughts and perspectives were a hundred years ago, you know, on sex, on, you know, nature, on, on anything. You can take any subject, how different it is. Um, and despite what any one, one person's perspective is on it, um, it, it really, we evolve along. You, we can see how we're evolving based on how things change in culture. Now we have, you know, we we're up to, um, allowing gay marriage. I mean, think of the people who were persecuted over the years. This is just all, the, you know, the result we can, we can, you know, sort of see how humanity on the whole is feeling and where we're evolving to just by look, just by reading the headlines in the news. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah. those who come in to challenge, you know, those who, who feel challenging to many, so I could point to political leaders and so forth. Those who challenge bring up, um, sort of amplify that life impulse in the masses around. Mm -hmm. And so challenges are fine because it chaos always precedes reorganization. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, it's always, you know, and we're in a lot of that right now in the United States. Um, but, we, but we're moving through, we're making our way through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great point. We are we are always evolving, and we can see where we're evolving in acceptance, and where we're not. And I and I love what you're saying about e using political figures that they um, every everything outside of you. I look like I look at it as a megaphone of what um, and bringing you contrast to help you see what is inside of yourself that needs to be looked at. Um, and, and that, you know, why do you think a certain way or why do you hold these beliefs or what is your programming that you've brought through generationally? Um, is it time for it to, um, to shift in perspective? Uh, and, and so your consciousness is always being, um, called upon in so many different ways and we don't like them because a lot of them feel painful to us especially when we disagree with what we're seeing outside of ourselves. but it is it is the natural water of how things are created in this world for us to look deeper inside of ourselves and want to look deeper inside of ourselves that that's also um not everybody wants to do that. It, it's funny, when I've talked to Jesus about it, he said, each person has their own level of desire. And desire plays a big role in how much you want to do. I mean, I think the natural order of things, I call that God, is always teasing you to open up to look within to get move closer to understand your your magic in this world and who you really are and 
and so we can fight that or uh, other people might not care. They don't care. They, they're just happy to be um, in this existence at where they are right at the moment, which everything is, is okay. Everything where you are is perfect in your, um, in your journey. But uh, you have, yeah, everybody has different levels of desire of wanting to um, expand themselves. Definitely. Um, and, and that is, you know, that is getting closer to your authenticity and, and recognizing as you become proactive, you know, recognizing what is balancing for you and, and what isn't because we are, um, we, we do get so off track over, not in the long run, but in the short term, you know, we can really get off track. Um, and, you know, and pain is a very strong and clear message that something needs to change. Mm -hmm. Something needs to change. What will we do if we didn't, if we didn't feel the pain, our species wouldn't be alive because we wouldn't know enough to, to, to be able to, to know that, that something needs to change, mm -hmm. not to aggrandize pain. It's very serious. Mm -hmm. um, but to take that message seriously in the context that it's being brought mm -hmm. and, and remembering again that, that it is, you know, whatever you choose to bring to it and the choice itself um, is healing, you know, I mean, just, just moving into choice instead of being, you know, sort of just passively letting it happen. Um, bringing some kind of consciousness to it and um and then whatever it is that you do with that mentally or emotionally or physically or spiritually is you know you are assisting humanity in moving forward in 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 that specific way mm -hmm. <clears throat> with that specific ailment mm -hmm. um and if we you know if we can all remember that and and feel some self-acceptance and self-respect around that bigger picture it brings more meaning and more purpose mm -hmm. to healing mm -hmm. it certainly does it's to know that you're not just healing yourself you're healing everything outside of you everything mm -hmm. and wanting to claim peace for yourself and have harmony inside your own heart and mind will create such an unbelievable shift in humanity because you are bringing harmony um, to as much as you can outside of you. And I know that the more that I can find myself in that place, I don't, I see more of a reflection of that outside of me. There's, I, like the chaos is not part of my life. If I turn the TV on, it can become part of my life. <laughs> but, you know, around me, um, I, I don't see that. I see the reflection of what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think it's really interesting how you have so much power in yourself to do good, mm -hmm. to do, I mean, there's there's biblical sayings of saying that you save one save one person you save the world right yeah that's beautiful yeah. that all you need to do is save one and you save yourself yeah. <laughs> yeah. you save yourself you save you save the basically it's the universe i believe the universe lives inside of each one of us because we are consciousness so um it is an amazing journey and and for people to understand that when you care enough to do something for yourself even if it's painful mm -hmm. like you're saying they are helping each other but i also look at everything as a mirror so whatever's going on out there is in divine order and you don't have to like it, but it is giving you a message. And that message is so important. 
you were talking about pain before and you know something i've learned through my process is because uh, i hated pain like physical pain i hate <laughs> i hate physical pain i'm like where's the advil <laughs> And I, at times, would have such physical pain, and Jesus just kept saying, "This, uh, it's all coming from your mind. There is something inside of you that needs to shift. And and when you can move into the pain and ask what it is that is, um, and this doesn't, this means for any kind of pain, physical, emotional." that um that you ask what are you trying to tell me what do you what is it that i need to hear that i don't understand then you will start to un see what the pain why that pain is there and as you had mentioned before that gives you an opportunity to transmute that pain by um shifting a perspective or by um, processing something that you're holding on to because I, I think as you must believe too that um, all pain is um, is energetic resistance inside of ourself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but learning how to do that is also part of your journey it's not easy it's it's not easy to sit in pain and um, especially when part of you is screaming like just make it go away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just make it stop. I don't want to, I don't, I just give me a pill or do, do something to make it stop. And that's why we have such addiction problems in our world wow. is because we just want to make stop what nature wants yeah. us to heal. To resist, the, to resist that process. Mm -hmm. But you know, just just taking responsibility in the first place mm -hmm. for for looking into it because we do have, um, we have had you know through time, um, as you said, sort of there can, could, can be resistance to healing. Some people are stuck in victimhood or martyrdom. That's not everybody. I'm not trying to say that it is, but it, it certainly is a part of the picture. Um, but as we take responsibility for being, just being conscious about it, however that shows up for you, mm -hmm. um, but, and not trying to hold other people responsible for healing us. Mm -hmm. We want support. We want ideas. We want research. We want um, love. We want all of those things, but we can't. Um, hand off the responsibility entirely for others to heal us because it can never be, you know, we have to take that responsibility to heal ourselves. Um, and I wanted to, I wanted to just touch in briefly with you were talking about peace and harmony um, and which really got my attention because I'm, I'm in the midst of, you know, I, one of the things that I, do one of the practices and with clients i um channel frequencies so we channel peace we channel love compassion harmony you know and all of these frequencies and really when i say channel what i mean really really immerse in exactly what those qualities feel like and bring them in and and, and allow it to shift our vibrations and shift our field so around peace and I'm, I'm just in the midst of this um recently and i'm, I'm coming to understand that uh, to have a different understanding of peace because i i think that we often and i do a lot of meditate guided meditations and i've done it on these shows you know and you know and we're all about peace but peace doesn't mean um no action so I think, you know, and especially for, this is for myself, and I'm sort of talking to myself because I, you know, have come at peace as a clear and spacious and calm and balanced and serendipitous and, you know, and, and these qualities. But I'm feeling that, especially right now in this new paradigm, 
um, that isn't necessarily the only qualities of peace that are being called for right now. Was we're really being called to be proactive around the racism, around you know the the political strife, around the pandemic, around you know so many so many things that are happening right now, and so that harmony. And I love how you brought those in together. Um, that that it's really kind of the harmonious aspect of peace mm -hmm. is is what is being called for right now not in a not in a sort of a non-reactive or passive way but but bringing um sort of spaciousness and balance to to harmony i and i just i had to say that because you just brought up this hot topic buzzword for me <laughs> in my <laughs> meditations recently <laughs> And uh -huh. I haven't talked to anybody about it, so yeah. so there we are. I, I'm bringing that to you. <laughs> and there, and there, and that's how consciousness works, right? That's that is what's in your mind is coming out of my mouth, and 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 so I I guess as I'm going along and I'm listening to, you, so I would see that you cannot have peace and harmony if you are not in your authenticity. And so if it is in your authenticity to do an action or say something or whatever it is, if you are not doing that, you are not in harmony with yourself. And so, so, so it doesn't mean that you don't have an opinion or, or that you don't have something to say or that you want to do something. It, it means that you are in your authentic self at the moment and um, I remember when I first started to public speak and I was so scared. Um, I was so, oh my God, you have no idea how scared I was to talk in public. And, and I just heard somewhere and I asked Jesus, I said, please give, please give me peace while I speak my truth. Please give me peace while I speak my truth. And that, and that really brings that all together is that you are being your authentic self when you, and, and you can have peace even talking about something um, that's uncomfortable for you or for somebody else to hear. And, be, and you know, it's because those parts of us are asking us to stand up these those characters those aspects of ourselves are at times asking us to stand up for ourselves or to as a um that you need to um ask for or speak what you need to do and when you keep saying oh uh, i'm afraid to say that or i'm afraid to do this or i don't want to rock the boat that part of you um, become self-reject. This is self-rejecting behavior, and this creates a lot of pain inside of ourselves. So, we want to we want to honor what is coming forth within ourselves, even though it's scary. That's a healing. That was a healing that you processed through. Mm -hmm. The the you know the you got past the the. Um, letting yourself stay small not expressing because all of your worth and look at the work that you're doing look at what resulted from that processing of that particular healing mm -hmm. and and here you are and i know that others are gaining courage by seeing what you're doing and knowing that that they can do it too and since so you know you've benefited the world by that that you that you went through <laughs> we're we're all doing it and thank you i appreciate that but that's what each one of us are here to do is bust through break through the consciousness the denseness of of a closed mind and and allow that divine nature inside of you to keep cultivating this beautiful evolution of of you 
imagine what our humanity can look like even you know 10 years or 20 years from now if people are willing to open and receive yes. that there's more there's so much more than they ever could have imagined yes oh my gosh yes and and we are doing it mm -hmm. and you know, and the word is out there and i think that is what i think that the internet is a healing tool for humanity because we can share just like you and I are doing right now. Um, you know, it used to be difficult to get together and, and to be, you know, to be able to, to converse with others from around the world, but we can do it now. And that's, you know, that's why, you know, healing is, is speeding up too. You know, we're, we're in this phase of, you know, we have the choice, we can do it, and we are doing it. Mm -hmm. And um, we're changing the face of the future this way. Yeah, we are. And everybody's doing it in their own beautiful way, their own unique, unique way. The, that's where all the diversity is. And yeah. and it it's like the spice of life, uh, having, having this awesome, uh, this awesome world filled with uh, differences and learning that it's okay yeah. and that you don't have to be scared of it. You don't have to be scared mm -hmm. because that's the, that's probably the number one programming we're all working through, right? Is everything had to be the same, the culture, you know, don't go out of your family because right. this is, this is your safe haven that if you go out other places, you're going to change. You're not going to be the same. You won't fit in with us anymore. And, and all of that is, um, it is fear-based thinking. It is. And, mm -hmm. and it's, you know, the tribal mind of wanting to keep everyone to, together. It's even the concept of misery loves company. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? you know? Yeah. Um, and, and just fear of the unknown, mm -hmm. but we are pioneers. Um, you know, I, I, I wish that everyone could think of themselves as leaders when they step out, they step out consciously and, you know, with, with spirited purpose, um, that, you know, you are, you are a leader. So I, I, I hope that people will hear that message and, Think of them, you know, and know themselves, I should say, as as a leader moving mm -hmm. forward. Yeah. The doing it better than the last generation. Yes. In the journey. Yeah. It's always the case, you know, mm -hmm. every generation does something a little better. Mm -hmm. You know, we can already see those coming up. I mean, all of my kids, they, they think very differently than millennials, mm -hmm. um, you know, and the Gen Xers. They, you know, they they've benefited massively by our generation because there was so much revolution. You know, we were really the generation that broke out. Um, and it wasn't easy, but it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And onward and upward we go, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and just uh, embracing the journey and knowing that we are loved and moving forward. This Always is moving forward. <laughs> this has been a great conversation, Sheila. It's so um it's so wonderful to have this time with you. And we have lots of um people with us watching, enjoying what our conversation is and wonderful. yeah, we have Robert Painley on. He says great discussion and if we all do our little piece collectively we can move mountains. Yeah which is so true, um, and people saying hi. Uh, so I think, you know, I know that this is an important conversation that people can hopefully keep having and listening to the recording of it. And it's one oh, day at a time. I have, I've loved this. I wish we had all day. I could talk <laughs> <you> all day. <laughs> Me too. But it's, it's really been wonderful. Mm -hmm. and. I'm, I'm really thrilled to have been here with you. Oh, thank you. Me too. Why don't you tell people how they can get in touch with you? And I, I know you're teaching some classes now. Are they still open for registration? Or Yeah, there are classes still open for registration on Enlightened World Network. 
Um, it's a series of 10 classes going on right now. We just finished our third this week, but they do stand alone. Um, so you can come in week by week. And these are on sensory development, which is one of our superpowers of, uh, of the new human. Um, and I do personal frequency work, as I said, um, really channeling very deeply frequencies, very customized to the individual with whatever's happening in your life um, in the moment. Could be physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, um, and, and other kinds of personal and spiritual mentoring. So um, look on Enlightened World at the, it's under the Marketplace tab, the courses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you know, contact me at Sheila at SheilaCash.com. Um, and I'm on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. Contact me however you like. Yeah, and yeah. you have, have a couple of books too, right? I have a couple of books. One, the first one called Evolve Your Life. Mm -hmm. um, that's on Amazon. And then the second one is um, Success Breakthroughs, which uh, is co-written with um, Jack Canfield. Those are on Amazon. That's great. That's great. Please check out Shayla's um, work. Uh, she's a wonderful humanitarian and uh, you will not be sorry. Uh -huh. Thank you, Deb. Uh, you're welcome. It's been great having you here. And it's been an interesting topic today because you're teaching classes on that right now is what you talked about. And, and actually, I am too. And you can find those on Enlightened World Network. The one that's coming up Saturday is on healing your wounded child, getting started into learning how to process that pain and believing in yourself that you can manage it. Uh, and actually meeting your spiritual guide so that you can uh, have help in doing that. So please uh, check, out all, check out Angel Heart Radio and Enlightened World Network. Um, Angel Heart Radio has amazing gifts of divine messages on it. It's a beautiful platform. And uh, I'm wishing you all an absolutely beautiful day. And when in doubt... Never underestimate the power of prayer. You are being listened to, listened to and heard throughout the universe. And it always responds with infinite and eternal love. Remember to go inside and listen through your heart for the whispers of heaven. I love you and God bless you. Bye-bye. everybody. You've been listening to another fabulous program on Angel Heart Radio. Our goal is to remind you of how much you matter in the world and to let you know that we appreciate who you are in the world. You can check out who's on, when we're on, and who our guests are at angelheartradio.com. Everything is there. It's all just one click away. Angel Heart Radio programs are powerful tools to help you in your life and your life experience. They are not intended, nor should they, be used to replace your medical or legal advice. Powered by love, Angel Heart Radio is brought to you by angellight777.com. The views and opinions expressed by Angel Heart Radio hosts, guests, co-hosts and associates should not be construed as advice from Angel Heart Radio.